Today we are going to study the sermon titled God's Commandments and the Way of Salvation. Through the teachings of the Bible, let us realize how precious God's commandments are. In order to research the mentality that leads people to commit crime, a psychologist left his luxury car with the trunk unlocked in a wealthy neighborhood for a few days. Several days passed, but nothing happened to the car. Since it was a wealthy neighborhood, the car did not tempt people to commit crime, even though it was a very expensive car. The psychologist then smashed one of the windows. Something strange began to happen in that wealthy neighborhood after the window was smashed. The expensive items that were inside the car began to disappear one by one. The items in that car were affordable to the wealthy people of that neighborhood. Yet the broken window triggered the mentality of the once law-abiding residents to commit crime. All the essential parts of the car, like the tires, were stolen. In the end, only the body of the car was left. Such a strange phenomenon occurred in this wealthy neighborhood. People wondered, how can we reduce the crime rate of neighborhoods where it is high? Based on the result of this experiment, they decided to do a graffiti removal campaign. Since the graffiti removal campaign began, the crime rate decreased dramatically in just a few months. The crime rate decreased by approximately 40% after only one year. Through this example, we can learn an important lesson concerning the mental process of men. One person's small criminal activity can lead to numerous crimes, and one cleaning movement can defeat many people's desire to commit crimes. Scholars concluded that the way to lower crime rates is to keep our environment clean rather than increasing the number of police officers. The reason I am sharing this story with you today is because the devil, our enemy, started to break God's statutes, decrees, and laws beginning with small crimes. After people committed a small crime, like breaking a window, how did their mentality change? They became bold enough to commit more serious crimes. Starting with the Sabbath day, they began to break God's statutes and decrees, thinking, why does it matter whether we worship on Saturday or Sunday? It is just a difference of one day. In the same way, they broke the feasts of God, including the Passover of the New Covenant. In the end, people even denied God, the Creator of the New Covenant, who instituted the statutes, decrees, and the laws for the salvation of mankind. That is why God came to the earth a second time. Father An Sang Hong and Heavenly Mother came to the earth and restored all the teachings of the Bible, such as the Sabbath day, the Passover, and all the feasts of the New Covenant one by one. Even today, they are guiding us to salvation. They taught us how important God's commandments are and how precious the Sabbath day is. They restored God's statutes, decrees, and laws one by one, teaching us all their meanings. Even though the luxury car was left unattended in the wealthy neighborhood for several days, people were not interested in it. However, once a window was broken, they began to show interest in that car. What were they interested in? They were interested in crime. 
This was where the desire to commit crime arose. As soon as one of God's laws was destroyed, what began to happen to all of the other laws of God? People began to regard God's statutes, decrees, and laws as trivial. Why does it matter whether we keep the Sabbath day or Sunday? Or whether we keep the Passover or Christmas? Having faith in God is all that matters. As they started thinking in this way, what did they end up doing to God who gave us the new covenant, including the Passover and the Sabbath day? How did they treat God? They disregarded the existence of God. This was Satan's plan. However, what did God do concerning all the truth that Satan had destroyed? God restored the truths one by one. God restored the Sabbath day and the Passover that had been ruined. God restored the new covenant and the feasts that had been ruined. In order to reduce crime rates in New York, more manpower from law enforcement is needed. However, that was only effective in catching criminals. When a different measure, like the removal of graffiti, was taken, the surrounding environment improved and people's desire to commit crime decreased. Since we were cast down to the earth because of sins we committed in heaven, God taught us to regard His statutes, decrees, laws, and the truth of the new covenant as absolute so that we will never sin again. In the end, something that looked trivial can destroy our souls. We should not regard any teaching as trivial. So today, let us learn through the Bible that keeping God's commandments is a way to save our souls. Hasn't the weather been extremely hot? Whenever it is hot, I think that God is giving us a practical lesson through nature. It has been so hot that it went over 50 degrees Celsius in some European countries. Now the climate changes taking place are record-breaking. This scorching weather makes me think, living in this hot weather is tormenting. So how much more painful it will be if we have to live forever in a place hotter than those countries. In Luke chapter 16, the rich man asked God, who is represented as Abraham, please send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Everyone, can we cool down when water from the tip of a finger touches our tongue? However, hell, which is everlasting, is a place where souls are desperate for even a small drop of water. How precious is the truth of the new covenant that we are preaching now. We must not keep the Sabbath day and the Passover habitually just because they are written in the Bible. Instead, we must regard them as precious. Let us understand the desperate heart of the rich man from the parable who shouted, so that they will not also come to this place of torment and regard God's commandments as more precious and keep them. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. See, the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. It will be the same for priest as for people, for master as for servant, for mistress as for maid, for seller as for buyer, for borrower as for lender, for debtor as for creditor. The earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. This earth will be completely laid waste and totally plundered. The Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers, the world languishes and withers, the exalted of the earth languish. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. 
Verse 6. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. What was the reason that all these things were happening? It was because people disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and did not keep the everlasting covenant. Living on the earth, we find it difficult to adapt to many hardships, just like the ever-changing environment. Then, what will happen if we cannot enter the everlasting kingdom of heaven? In other words, what if we go to hell? In the book of Revelation, God prophesied, the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. What will happen to us if we are thrown to this place? Mercifully, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother came to the earth to save us from the clutches of hell by preaching the new covenant and teaching us the truth. They have been leading all mankind to the way of salvation. Let us move on to Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it is written, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Where will they enter? What will happen if we cannot enter heaven? God said, Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, when we stand before the judgment seat, God will either send us to heaven or to hell. In a courtroom, the judge determines whether someone is a criminal or not. In the same way, on judgment day, God will determine whether we deserve to go to heaven or hell. On that day, who will be qualified to enter heaven? When Jesus came to the earth 2,000 years ago, He taught all mankind that those who do Father's will, that is, God's will, can enter heaven. Then how did Jesus separate those who would go to heaven from those who would go to hell? Let us see His teaching regarding this in verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you who are what? Evildoers. Therefore, those who do Father's will can enter heaven, and those who don't receive the judgment of eternal hell. Who are the people who will receive the judgment of eternal hell? They are those who practice lawlessness. They are those who do not keep God's statutes, decrees, laws, and covenant. Those who practice lawlessness can never do Father's will. Those who practice lawlessness belong to the group of people who do not do God's will. The place where these people will go is the punishment of everlasting fire. We teach people that we will go to hell if we fail to keep God's teachings and that we must obey God's will in order to go to heaven. However, there are people who say, if everybody is going to hell, why not join them? Though they speak that, they cannot endure this heat. People are distressed with the temperature on the earth, saying, it's too hot. However, they also say, I don't mind going to hell since everyone else is going there. How ignorant is this comment? We must try our best to obey God's will. Jesus taught us the importance of obeying God's laws in the New Testament times, and the prophets also gave the same teaching throughout the 66 books of the Bible. Let us go to Jeremiah chapter 11, and see the outcome of those who violated God's statutes, decrees, and laws. In chapter 11, verse 1, it is written, 
This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem. Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Cursed is the man who does not obey the terms of this covenant. What will he receive? It says he will be cursed. On the day of judgment, if they are cursed, will they be sent to heaven or to hell? They won't be able to avoid going to hell. Who said this? Didn't Jeremiah convey this message saying, this is what the God of Israel says. God tells us that those who do not obey and follow the terms of this covenant will be cursed. Let us continue with verse 4. The terms I commanded your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. I said, Obey me and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. God has promised us that if we obey God and keep His word, He will be our God and we will be His people. And those who disobey His word will be cursed. God did not say this to scare us. Since this will surely happen, God informed us of the truth through a prophet. In Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 10, it reads, When you tell these people all this, and they ask you, Why has the Lord decreed such a great disaster against us? What wrong have we done? What sin have we committed against the Lord our God? Verse 11, Then say to them, It is because your fathers forsook me, declares the Lord, and followed other gods and served and worshipped them. They forsook me and did not keep my... What did they not keep? Even by this one fact that you are not keeping God's law, I can already see that you are worshipping another god and have betrayed me. The Bible says that God knows all this. You did not keep my law. This is why this great disaster is coming upon you. This is what God explained. Let us see how important God's statutes, decrees, and laws are by looking at His warning given through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 22. When the Lord could no longer endure your wicked actions and the detestable things you did, your land became an object of cursing and a desolate waste without inhabitants as it is today. Because you have burned incense and have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed Him or what? Followed His what and what? Law or His decrees or His stipulations. This disaster has come upon you as you now see. Because you have not followed God's law or His decrees or His stipulations, this disaster has come upon you. This is what God taught us. Then, if we long for the kingdom of heaven and want to receive salvation, shouldn't we keep God's statutes, decrees, and laws no matter what our circumstances are? We must keep them faithfully. God could put us in a favorable environment to easily keep God's law. However, anybody can keep God's law in favorable circumstances. That is why God sometimes puts us in an unfavorable environment. Seeing all the efforts we make to keep God's decrees and laws even in unfavorable circumstances, God sees our hearts and knows whether we have faith in Him. Once upon a time, there was a young man in a rich family. His father wondered, can I really let my son inherit my estate? 
Will he be able to expand our estate? With concern, he tested his son, saying to him, Go out into the streets today, earn money by yourself, and bring it to me. Until this time, the son had only been squandering his parents' wealth. He had never labored for money before. He came back empty-handed without doing anything. His mom felt pity for him. So, she gave her son three coins without telling his father. She gave him three coins saying, Here, tell your dad that you earned these coins to help appease his concerns. Since his mom was giving them to him, he just received them and gave them to his father, saying, Father, I've earned these coins today. When the father saw that, he got furious and threw them into the fire of the wood-burning stove. However, the son just stood there, watching them burn. So the father said to him, You can't deceive me. Go, earn money by yourself, and bring it to me. You didn't earn this money. The same thing happened several times. His mom helped him every time this happened. Every time, the father knew that it wasn't his money. You didn't earn this money. One day, the son realized that he would have to earn the money himself by working hard, just as his father had wished. So, although he was a son of a rich family, he worked by the sweat of his brow, chopping wood and tending the farm. By doing so, he earned one coin. He said, Look, this time I really worked hard to earn this money. But then his father said, Hey, are you trying to deceive me again? And he threw it in the fire. By this, the son was so shocked, he reached into the fire to take the money out. Then he said, How could you throw my money into the fire after I had to work so hard to earn it? Saying this, he tried to find the money. Then his father finally said, Now I know that, indeed, you earned that money by the sweat of your brow. God has commanded us to keep His statutes, decrees, and laws and places us in all types of environments, sometimes in difficult environments and sometimes in environments where it is easy to keep them. If God puts everybody in a favorable environment, God cannot see who regards God's statutes, decrees, and laws as valuable. However, when we are put in a difficult environment, God can see who tries to keep them by overcoming the environment. Aren't these people truly those who obey God's statutes, decrees, and laws, knowing how important they are? God uses many ways to look into our hearts. Everyone, sometimes God puts obstacles in our path to teach us that God's commandments are the true way of salvation that leads us to heaven. Some say, it's strange. Things always keep coming up every Sabbath day. There are always things that try to prevent us from going to church on the Sabbath day. These are situations that make us weigh the Sabbath day against worldly matters. Through all these, God weighs our faith to see whether we regard God's statutes, decrees, and laws as more important than anything else. Let us go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made, what did he make? A decree and a law for them, and there, what did he do? He tested them. God tested them to see whether they keep the decree and the law or not. Everyone, we have God's laws such as the Sabbath day, the Passover, 
the regulation of veil, the law forbidding idolatry, the law of being baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God has granted us all the laws of the new covenant, the truth of life. Ultimately, who are all these things for? What did Jesus say when He established the new covenant? He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. We must not forget that all these are for us. Let us see a revelation that God gave Apostle John concerning the matter of keeping God's decrees, laws, and commandments. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had what kind of gospel? The eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented. Here, what will he be tormented with? With burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. We've already studied several times about this beast through Revelation chapters 13, 17, and 18. Here, what will anyone who worships the beast and his image receive on the forehead or on the hand? They will receive his mark on the forehead or on the hand and be tormented with burning sulfur. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. They will receive the mark on the forehead or on the hand. Everyone, doesn't this sound familiar? Where else have you seen this scene? When do we receive a sign on the forehead or on the hand? When we keep God's commandments, the Passover, which is one of God's commandments, will be on our forehead. There is a law of God which will be for us like a reminder on our forehead and a what on our hand? A sign on our hand. In other words, if we keep God's law, we can receive a sign on our forehead and on our hand. But what if we keep Satan's commandments, not God's commandments? What will we also receive on our forehead or on our hand? In this case, too, we will receive a mark. A sign or a mark is to be given on our forehead or on our hand, whether we keep God's commandments or Satan's commandments. Everyone will receive one of them. People who keep God's commandments will receive God's sign. However, people who keep the commandments of the beast will receive the mark of the beast. They will be distressed and tormented with burning sulfur where the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. God showed this revelation to us through Apostle John. As we can see, God's commandments, which we are keeping today, are the way that God has provided for our salvation. On the way of salvation, I pray that no one and no soul will fall behind or lose any of the truths of the new covenant, such as the Sabbath day, the Passover, and the seven feasts of three times. Let us have faith like that of David who said, I will regard God's commandments as more precious than pure gold and follow the path God has designated for us. Thank you very much.